Hello and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we talk about men's grooming, style, personal development and anything that will help you on your journey to being the best chap that you can be. Now today it's a video I'm going to talk about shoes, a topic which often comes up because of its importance in the men's style world and I've done quite a few videos on purchasing shoes and the maintenance and care of shoes and bringing them up to a wonderful shine. And uh, one of my friends, who's also a viewer of the channel, reached out to me and told me he had a pair of shoes that he'd been struggling to get a good shine on for a long old time. So being the decent sort of chap that I am, I said, well, why don't you drop them off next time you're passing and I'll see what I can do. And I'm pleased to say that uh, my friend Stu did drop off this wonderful pair of John White shoes. Not here to John White shoes? Well, they're not necessarily the best shoes in the world. They're certainly not made of the best component parts, which is an important factor. Many men don't have large sums of money to blow on very expensive footwear. Some of us have to buy modest shoes, in some cases pre-owned shoes, and bring them up to a standard so that we can look our very best. And in this case, this is a modestly priced pair of shoes. Um, John White Shoes, although it is an old heritage company, fallen on hard times, everything is made overseas and to a certain quality standard. I believe the shoes we're looking at today were made in India and we're not talking about the finest component parts. So that said, we'll do what we can. Let's flip the camera around. We'll get it on the table and we'll see if we can make a silk purse out of a sow's ear to use the old phrase. So here are our John White shoes in the box as they arrive. John White from London. What a wonderful product they must be indeed. Let's have a look then. Let's find out what we've got here. And let's have a look. So, uh, what we have is a pair of pretty standard looking um, brogue, wingtip brogue style shoes with, with uh, Derby style lacing, as you can see. So Derby being the lacing isn't enclosed, so it's sewn on top rather than an integral part of the lacing system. And what else can I tell you about these beauties? Well, they are declared proudly as being made of leather, real leather, whatever that means. It, it is leather. It doesn't feel to be of the very highest quality. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's got some sort of foxing, which is the sort of white uh, where the, the, the polish hasn't sort of formed into a nice finish and it's got that sort of white foxing on there. Underneath, we have a rubber or a composite rubber sole, which is cemented to the upper. So it's certainly not Goodyear welt or Blake stitched. So we've got a very, very simple shoe here, which to be honest, as I say, is not of the most elite quality, but then again, it didn't cost a great deal of money. So this is the point where many people may be coming in, looking at dress shoes, thinking I need a dress shoe, and you may wanna improve what you've got. If you've only got a small amount of money, you're not prepared to go pre-owned. And so hence, you end up with something a bit like this, which I would describe as a budget shoe, which is a shoe for many different occasions, perhaps. So let's take one away. We'll take away the left one. We will compare what we have done at the end of the day to that one, so we can see if we've made a positive impact on the shoe. So the first thing I'm gonna do, as I always do, is I'm gonna get a shoe tree, because it makes my job a whole lot easier, and I'm going to pop that into the shoe, so now the shoe is nice and solid, and there's positive uh, force underneath when I'm pushing down on it, so it's not collapsing in on itself. Now, my good friend told me that he'd tried to polish this shoe for a long time, applying Kiwi shoe polish, and I can see, I hope you can also, that, you know, it's not a great finish, and as I say, he's applied polish, and it's where it's cracked, you've got that sort of white foxing finish, where it's not very attractive to look at. So my first step is going to be to remove as much of that polish as I can. And to do that, I'm gonna use this Sophia Reno Mat. Now, essentially, this is just a solvent, and I'm gonna give it a good old shake. Good old shake up, make sure all the active ingredients are combined within, because it's been stood for a little while. Take the lid off, and this is a simple, simple product to use, and all it does is a stripper, basically. So you get yourself a cloth, any old cloth. I've got a dirty cloth here, it doesn't matter. It's gonna get a whole lot dirtier in a moment. And I am just gonna apply some of that Reno mat to the cloth, and now we just give it the old heave ho to try and remove as much of that excess old polish as we possibly can. And this is quite a laborious process, which will take us a little while. 
and uh, it's just about removing as much of that old polish as we can underneath so that we've got a, a blank canvas to start with when it comes to sorting out that finish with the polish. And unfortunately, it's a little bit boring, so I'm not gonna force you to watch this. I'm just gonna crack on and do this, uh, and we'll come back while I've stripped all this polish off. Okay, so I've been applying the Rena Matte now, and you know, just to reinforce it really, when you're putting this Rena Matte, this solvent on, you're pushing down quite hard, and you're trying to remove that product, the old polish on the shoe, so it does involve a bit of bit of pressure and that's the best result. So I've got loads of the old product off there, uh, but as I always do at this stage, I do like to make sure that the shoe is clear of the solvent because we do intend to apply polish, which won't mix very readily with that solvent. So I've just got some simple water here in this little spritzer bottle. I'm just going to apply it to this shoe, quick dusting over with the spritz water and a clean cloth. And I'm just going to rub that now, getting making sure that any of that Rena matte solvent which was lying on the surface is now taken away and again it's still bringing away some of the, the old polish underneath which just does the job a little bit better for us as well. Now having done that we have now cleared the shoe down to as good a blank canvas as we're going to get. Uh, you don't need to worry, using Rudamat can't remove any of the factory colour, the finish, because that should be you know, uh, an alcohol based dye which is you know, permanently applied to the shoe. So using rear mat isn't going to alter that at all in all reality. Although in truth, it's always a good idea to test it perhaps a little bit at the back of the shoe where it's not going to be, uh, you know, crushingly visible if there is a, uh, you know, a conflict in the way that the rear mat works with your particular pair of shoes. But in this case, I can see that it's taken it all down and I'm much more happy about going ahead and applying the next stages. So just to make sure the shoe is nice, and uh, dry now, I'm going to just leave it for 5-10 minutes to make sure that it's nice and dry, ready for the next stage. Okay, so now we've got this shoe which is dry. It's had that uh, treatment, so we know it's clear of any old material, any old polish. And although this isn't the best leather in the world, it is some form of leather. And like all leather, it was once a living thing, so it needs to be nourished, looked after, hydrated. And to do that today, I'm going to use some Safia Reno uh, Renovator, in fact, which is basically a conditioning cream. Um, very good quality one, in fact, one which I've been using for many years and uh, has worked very well for me. So what I'm going to do with that, simple process, going to get myself a cloth and just apply it round the fingers, simple cloth like that, round the fingers so you can see, nice and easy. Dip that into the renovator or renovator if you're a francophone and I'm just going to apply that all over the shoe sparingly. Get it all in there, doesn't matter if it goes into the holes of the broguing, that's all going to come off in a moment when it dries and the shoe is shown the brush which is what we're going to use to remove this in just a moment. So the idea of the the renovator, renovator is as it says, it just conditions the shoe and it really brings life to leather. So if you've got an old pair of shoes which are lacking in the hydration area, you know they've been in the back of the wardrobe for a long time and the leather hasn't seen much love, um, Renovator is a great product to bring it back to life and bring some hydration to that leather because hydration is such an important thing when it comes to leather. You can guarantee that dehydrated leather is leather that will crack it won't look very good and it will significantly shorten the lifespan of your shoes. Now in this case, this pair of shoes doesn't have a leather sole or heel. Ordinarily, I would apply the Renovator to the, the entirety of the shoe, except the underneath, of course. But in this case, it's rubber, so I'm not gonna bother. Uh, and all I'm doing, as you can see, is applying that Renovator in small circular motions all over the shoe. And I'm trying to, in a way, push it into the leather because the leather needs that hydration. And if your shoes are very dry, you know, they've been stored for years and years, you can repeat this stage several times to make sure that your shoe is well conditioned and hydrated because the more hydrated your shoe is, the easier it is to work on, the longer it will last, the better it will look, everything to play for when it comes to conditioning your shoes. So there we go, quite simple, doesn't take too long. 
Now, I've just got to let that dry. A lot of people, this is the only thing that they do to their shoes. They don't apply polish, they don't do anything else. They will simply apply a conditioning cream like Sophia. There are many other types out there. I'm not endorsing Sophia. It's just that I've used this product for many years and I know it to be very effective and very good. And I do recommend it to people. It's, uh, it costs about 15 pounds for a tin and a tin will last you for years as long as you're sort of a reasonable user of this stuff as long as you're not a professional shoe cleaner but uh, very good stuff and you need leave it dry only about five or so minutes and you'll see that the the shoe takes on a dull look because that that uh, conditioning cream has dried and already I'm outdoors here with a, a almost a brisk wind I would say so the shoe has dried somewhat quicker than ordinary uh, but it's now ready to remove that renovator and to do that is the simplest process it is the application of our good friend the brush this is a 100% horsehair brush uh, I've had it for many years purchased for a modest amount of money from a from a cobbler shop I think it was 15 pounds one of the best investments in shoe care I have ever made and it's well worth if you're somebody who takes shoe care seriously treating yourself to a nice brush so in time-honoured fashion, all we do now is apply the brush to the shoe with quite a vigorous back and forth motion. And we are taking off any excess renovator. We're not trying to get a shine on here, but what's happening is we're trying to take off any excess renovator which hasn't found its place, which hasn't been absorbed into the leather. And it, uh, it doesn't take a lot of effort for it, for it to do its work. The brush, particularly when you know you've got a, a good leather and a good pair of shoes, where the renovator has done its job very well. Now, in this case, um, this isn't a great leather. I'll be honest; it's some sort of lesser quality uh, leather. Real leather, yes, that's true. But of course, there are many different types of leather, as there are many different types of cars. You know, there are the cheapest possible cars, and there are Rolls Royce cars, and. Um, I'm not saying this is the cheapest possible pair of shoes, but it is certainly a pair of shoes which I wouldn't describe as the Rolls Royce of shoes for many reasons. But do you know what? Even after a single application of Sophia Renovator, I can already see a significant improvement to the quality of that shoe. It's now got a much better luster on it. It's got an all over sort of shine. And I know that it's hydrated and conditioned and ready for stage two. Now stage two, this pair of shoes, um, I know it's had polish applied to it. My, uh, my friend told me that he'd uh, done his best to get a shine on it, but he's probably only used some sort of wax polish. And I very much doubt that he will have used a cream polish. Now cream polish is really what you need to be thinking about if you're serious in shoe care, because within the cream polish, we've got quite a high level of pigmentation, color, which will not be apparent in wax. Now, even though I've got some wax polish here, if you look at wax polish, when you're looking at it, it appears to be quite heavily colored. And in this case, it looks a bit orange. In fact, it's a mid-brown. Uh, but that's because it's very concentrated and in a single place. So it looks very heavily pigmented. Truth is, it isn't. It's quite lightly pigmented. Whereas cream polish is where the pigmentation comes from. And this is Sophia again. I'm not using all Sophia products today because uh, it's a good quality product and I've tried and tested it and I know it's going to work. So as you can see, this is a mid-brown. Uh, I'm using mid-brown because I think it goes as close as I can get to this pair of shoes. I don't want to alter its colour in any way. So the mid-brown I'm going to apply right now and in exactly the same process as I did for using the Renovator. Get my cloth. I'm just going to wrap it around the fingers again. Simple, simple way, just like that. Good way of using old shirts up. Nothing goes to waste here. Get that nice and tight round the fingers. You dip the finger into the, the, the cream and we just apply it to the shoe. And we do exactly as we did. You can apply it. Uh, you know, you don't have to put this on in big, thick, lathering coats. There is no need for that. You know, this is good stuff. Um, again, costs around about the same amount of money, 15 pounds perhaps, something like that. And uh, not to worry though, because it's, it's gonna be sparingly invested, because if you buy a pot of this, and like me, you know, you, you've got quite a few pairs of shoes in, your, in my collection. Um, I only need to buy one of these pots every couple of years, really, because, you know, you, you, it's just, you don't go through it that quick. You know, if you look after your shoes well, um, they, they will pay you back. And using good quality shoe cream is worth your investment. So there we go, sticking that on there nicely. And just again, because of the cream, it's got lots of oils, it's got lots of waxes. And again, as the conditioning uh, cream, the Renovator, 
sort of improved the quality of the leather by introducing all the waxes within the Renovator. Exactly the same here, as well as applying a bit of pigmentation, a bit of color to it, we're also you know, improving the general health of this piece of leather because we're applying waxes and oils, which will have probably dried off and not been used. So there we go. And again, same as with the Renovator, all we need to do now is leave that to dry for a little while and we're ready to apply the brush before we move on to the next stage. Now, my friend told me that this was the pair of shoes which he wore on his wedding day. So it has some sentimental value to him. Uh, so hence, I'm paying particular special attention to make sure that we, we get a good result here today. And, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a silk purse out of this sow's ear of a pair of budget shoes. And at the end of the day, my goal is this is gonna look like a great pair of shoes you could wear to his, uh, I'm not gonna say to his next wedding, but to any occasion where one wants to look their very best and create a fantastic first impression. Now, it doesn't take very long for this um, um, pomade a shoe cream, it's called, from Sophia to, to dry off, particularly as I'm in the outdoors with a brisk sort of a breeze flooding past me. And I'm just gonna apply that brush again to the shoe just to bring it up and get rid of any of that pomade a shoe cream which hasn't been absorbed into the leather and isn't gonna be any use to us because ultimately that's what we wanted to do. We needed to work for us. We needed to bring us a nice luster, a nice shine and to bring the shoe, um, the leather health by hydrating it, conditioning it. And I have to say um, already, now that foxing has been taken away, that sort of white cracked uh, old polish has been taken away by the Renomat, uh, and now we've applied the shoe conditioning cream and the shoe cream itself, the coloring cream, this shoe looks altogether healthier, better looking. And to be honest, I mean, you could easily wear this right now as the finished article, you need go no further. But we are, after all, chaps who watch this channel. We want the very best from the products in our wardrobe. So now I've applied the cream, I'm gonna apply wax polish. Now, this is what most people think of when they think of shoe care products. Polish, when I say shoe polish, this is what people picture in their minds. But for me, this is kind of step three, step four in most cases when I'm working on my shoes. And as I've showed you, this is, it looks orange, but it is a mid-brown color. And again, it's a, it's a product by Safia. As you can see, I use this one quite a lot because I have a lot of mid-brown shoes in my collection. And quite simply, we go back to our good friend, the cloth, and we wrap it around our finger one more time, um, just to get a, a good working surface there. There we go. Right, so in this case, not too dissimilar from what we've just been doing. We just get some on our cloth and we apply it to the shoe in small circular motions. And the way I like to think of the wax polish is wax polish is almost like the overcoat for the shoe. Now that we've done the undercoats, the wax polish is what protects the shoe from the elements. So if you live in a um, a cold environment where there's lots of salt and you know grit and gravel on the pavements in the winter this will provide that outer protection if you live in a hot country where there's lots of sun this will to a degree protect your shoe from ultraviolet and by applying this all over the shoe we're giving it that little raincoat that little overcoat to wear which will protect it as it goes about its life and, you know, as I say, little bits at a time, just applying it in small circular fashions. I'm obviously not taking my time particularly here because um, we need to get through the video. We're not going to be here all day. I'm not going to bore you. So we're just going to apply that. And there we go. Quick little coat like that. Now the wax polish, the other thing it does, as well as providing that lovely protection for us, is it also gives us a lovely shine. That's what we're hoping for today. So, you know, you can go over it more than once if you're if your shoe needs that care and attention. But for us, I'm just gonna let that dry for a moment. And uh, let's, well, let's talk about John White for a start. John White's a shoe company with a, an amazing heritage. It, uh, it came into being in 1919, when John White himself, who in 1919 was actually 35 years of age, and he'd worked in the shoe industry for, you know, getting on for a quarter of a century at that point, decided to go it alone and he opened his own business in Northamptonshire. And those of you who know men's shoes will know Northamptonshire is the, the sort of, you know, the world mecca for men's footwear. Uh, remains to this day, uh, it's the place you go to good quality shoes. 
So John White started up his shoe company in 1919, just after the First World War. Uh, and by 1920, he'd you know, got a bit of traction. He had four people working for him, uh, but he started to gain a foothold, pardon the pun. And within 12 months, he had 125 men working for him and they were making 6,000 pairs of shoes and boots per week. So he really uh, captured the zeitgeist and he was charging ahead as a, you know, a successful shoe manufacturer. And he continued in that vein um, by 1930. Uh, he introduced uh, a product range called the Impregnable Range and uh, a, in a bit of a first for the shoe industry to launch that Impregnable Range he uh, rented out the front page of the Daily Mail newspaper uh, and it was a first bit of you know really um, innovative marketing in the shoe world and he introduced a very good quality very modest priced range of shoes called the Impregnable implying their, uh, their longevity and their resilience to daily wear and that was a huge success they sold one and a quarter million pairs of impregnable shoes in that first year uh, so it was a remarkable success and the shoe company uh, went on and on um, by 1941 uh, John White's had nine factories and were employing over 2,000 staff and were making you know 8 million pairs of shoes for the war effort. So as I say, 1941, right in the middle of the war there. And uh, they stepped up to the mark and they produced the footwear which was needed by the armed forces of Great Britain and its allies. Uh, they were manufacturing shoes and boots in a huge range from everything to jungle boots, to canvas boots, flying boots, um, and they were making boots also for the Soviets and the Greeks. And in fact, during that Second World War period, one in 10 pairs of shoes and boots issued to soldiers in the British war effort were manufactured by John White. So it was a huge success for them. In fact, in 1940, John White and the factory workers together paid for a Spitfire, which they named the Impregnable in honor of their famous shoe range. And that Spitfire went on to have at least two enemy aerial victories, two kills, so to speak, in the air, and was a successful fighter in that Second World War. So John White's, not only did they manufacture footwear for the war effort, but then they contributed to it as well. And this pair of shoes, as you can see here, now is looking awfully much better than it was just a short while ago when we started. Now, I think you'll agree it looks pretty good. We're in the natural light here and it, it looks pretty healthy. And I think with now having applied the conditioner, having applied the shoe cream, having applied the wax, we could walk away and feel pretty good about ourselves thinking that we've got a much, much better looking pair of shoes that we had a little while ago. But I promised my friend that I would pr pr produce for him a nice shine on this pair of shoes. So I'm now going to step up to the next level and I'm going to try and get a mirror gloss on this toe cap of this pair of wingtip brogues. And not the easiest task on a brogue because obviously it's not a nice sheer surface for us to work on, but it is achievable. And I'm going to prove that today in, as I say, making a silk purse out of this sow's ear. And, I'm, and to help me, I'm going to use this mirror gloss product by Safia. And you don't need this, but it is quite helpful. And I'm using black. They do it in a neutral color as well. But because I'd like to patina the shoe a little bit to get a bit of nuance to the color, I'm using black. As I say, there's a very light pigment to this polish. So even though it looks densely black to look at there, it isn't when you apply it to a pair of shoes. It isn't going to alter the color. It's just going to slightly darken the look of that uh, shoe toe cap where I'm going to apply this product and to put it on for me I'm going to use a simple cosmetic plaid which I have acquired from my wife's makeup uh, cupboard and I'm just going to put some water onto that pad not going to saturate it nothing like that I'm just dampling it that's all we want bit of dampness and as you can see I'm forming that pad into what is a little bit of a working pad and all I do at this stage I get my polish and I apply the pad to it I want to get plenty of that polish onto the end of the pad as you can see there hopefully and now I'm just going to apply that oh, bit of it coming out uh, to the shoe and it's the simplest thing all I do now keep going over and over this applying this product to the shoe not going too far back because this is a brogue it's not like when you polish an oxford you can tell you know that the toe cap 
has got the delineation. You can see where the shoe flexes. I can see there's a flex mark across the front of the toe cap here. And if I were to apply a mirror shine beyond that, when the shoe naturally flexes, all that would happen is that the crust of polish, which I'm about to build up by applying and applying different layers, is going to, to crack and fall away, and it's just gonna make the whole shoe look scruffy. So all I do at this stage is to keep applying this polish to this pair of John White uh, shoes, uh, and over and over again, bringing it up to an almost shine each time. But what I'm trying to do here is apply layer after layer after layer, and that will help us get a lovely shine on this pair of shoes. Now, to finish my story about John White's as I'm doing this, um, it's not a great ending. Even though John White is still in existence today, clearly still manufacturing shoes, their place as a perhaps top-end manufacturer has long since gone. And the company, unfortunately, you know, uh, as many of the big shoe manufacturers did, they found themselves in conflict with the globalization of manufacturing around the world. And of course, you know, as we see the Far East, uh, many shoes being made in Vietnam, China, places like that, where labor costs are significantly less than highly developed countries like the, U uh, the United Kingdom, it was impossible for them to compete on a global market. Uh, and unfortunately, over time, John White's, uh, John White's rather, um, declined and declined until they had to close uh, in 1994. So they kept going for a good old while until eventually they had to succumb. And in 1994, the company closed down. However, there is a bit of a happy ending to it because in the year 2000, uh, the company were relaunched. They were purchased by a chap called um, David Corbin. Now, David Corbin had been the chief executive of another well-known heritage British shoe manufacturer called Loke. He'd been in the industry for many years. And uh, Mr. Corbin purchased, or was a, 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 a behind the relaunch, should I say, of John White's. And to this day, they still produce these shoes for at an affordable range, all manufactured overseas. I believe most of their product range uh, come from India these days. And yes, they make these affordable level shoes now, which are, you know, we're not talking high-end quality and I'm not being degrading to the shoes by saying, you know, making a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But uh, for the price point, yeah, I think you can do better. You know, I would rather personally go pre-owned and source a pair of shoes from perhaps, say, um, eBay or some other auction platform rather than buying you know, of, of an inferior quality pair of shoes from perhaps a company like this. But uh, there we go, Everybody, everybody's taste is cut to a different level. And all I'm doing, gonna do now is keep applying layer after layer until I get a nice shine on this toe cap. So I'm not gonna force you to watch me through this, folks. I'm just gonna speed this up and we'll come together at the end to see the finished result. Well, welcome back. And now I've probably been polishing these shoes for about 10 minutes. And as I say, just building up layer after layer using the Sophia um, Mirror Gloss, which is just a nice product, which helps you get to that mirror shine more swiftly than you would if you're using uh, a much wetter, damper product. Uh, that's the secret really, it's just a bit drier. And well, here's the results. Now, um, I am very pleased, I have to say, considering when we started this journey, I wasn't confident that we'd get much of a shine out of this pair of shoes because, you know, I'm conscious that it was a low quality leather and it hadn't been looked after. It was many years old. So I know that my friend wore this on his wedding day and I know he's got children who are a few years old now. So this pair of shoes has probably not seen a great deal of activity uh, over the years, but there we go. A nice little shine and as ever, Let's get its friend from the other side so we can give a nice comparison. And here we go. Here is the left shoe. And there we go. Let's just have a little look at that, if we will, just so that you can have a nice little comparison. And as you can see, I've probably invested 15 minutes of time into that one shoe. So if you say I'll be doing the same with the left before I'm finished, and there you can see this shoe here is rather tired. It's got that old cracked polish uh, that has cracked in a white fashion around uh, the flex point of the shoe. It just makes it look scruffy and, you know, much lower quality. Here, 
what we have is a nice mirror shine having had the shoe now being conditioned it's had some shoe cream to add the pigment to it it's had a layer of wax polish to protect it and finally it's had some mirror shine which has brought it up to that beautiful gleaming polish which when my friend wears this now in a group of people he will undoubtedly stand out from the crowd and look a damn sight better than those around him who haven't made the effort so there we go just a final comparison yet again before we uh we bring that to a close hopefully you can see that it was worth our effort there i'm quite pleased and yes that's come up rather nicely well there we go did we make the proverbial silk purse out of the sow's ear now you've seen the shoes here they are and it's a fantastic mirror shine that we've been able to achieve i'll just bring that in perhaps for a better look there we go and i think it's fair to say yes i think we have achieved something from more or less very simple component parts there this is now a shoe that when worn in a public environment will stand out it will make the wearer stand out from the crowd as somebody who's ta taken time attention and they look smart and it says to the people who look at that person and meet that person you know this is a person who can take care of the details this is somebody who's a chap so there we go i hope you've enjoyed this journey today bringing these shoes up to a fine standard and if you have i would encourage you to click that thumb button and also click the subscribe button as well because i invite you to join us here at the chaps guide community as our channel progresses and goes forward and also please interact with me in the comments section below let me know what you'd like to see in the future and i'll do the very best i can so until the next time please take care of yourselves stay well looking sharp and we'll meet again very soon, back here at the Chaps Guide.